I believe one of the things that uh, happened today was that Secretary Evers and others admitted that this was handled wrongly, that, that the chain of communication could have been a lot better, not only with the legislature, but also with the area leaders. Um, I was hoping to learn more of the financial savings uh, for the area. Uh, as appropriations chair, that's one of the reasons I wanted to have it. If we're closing down a facility, in my mind, we've got to be saving more than just the 1.3 to 1.5 million for upkeep on the grounds. There, there has to be a consolidated savings somewhere else. And uh, so I'm looking into that. I, I'm also concerned about how mental health will continue, as well as the historical impact uh, of the area. So it opened up at least uh, two other areas for me today that I want to know budget-wise how it's going to impact the budget. I um, was, it, it reaffirmed what I already knew, that key players uh, in the area were not notified. And when I talk about key players, the director of our career tech system, who had classrooms in William S. Key, learned about it from a press release. I think we're better people than that. Employees at William S. Key learned about it from a press release. I think we're better people than that. We need to be talking to our, our people that's in the state of Oklahoma because we value them. If we, if we value them, we need to talk to them. First of all, I'm very happy that Senator Thompson decided to do this hearing and look into this. Uh, the, the ripple effects that's going to happen in Northwest Oklahoma through this decision is, is long lasting. Uh, this decision could very possibly cause some hospital closures. Uh, it's a loss of over 140 jobs and you move that out of, uh, you take away 140 jobs out of a, a small community as Woodward County is, it, it, it hurts and there is fiscal impact, it's economic impact, it's um, whether you are um, on a quick stop that's selling pops and, and candy bars or, or you've got the shoe store or the movie theater, you've just moved 140 people out of your community where you were already struggling to survive because of the oil crisis and people moving out because of that. This, this decision, I think, was um, hastily done. Now, they may have been looking at it, but I, I, I don't think they looked at all of the um, devastation that this decision is going to have on the community. What happens now is that I want to take some of the information that I received today uh, very specifically. Uh, some of it's going to be on the hospital. And so I was told I'm going to have numbers by in the morning about what is the financial impact of this. Before my time in the Senate, but I've been told that whenever we close the prison at Sayre, the hospital closed shortly thereafter. We're coming out of a pandemic, and I'm very much concerned about health care. And so we've got to look out in northwestern Oklahoma, if this is going to have a great impact upon health care, what can we do as a state to go in and, and say, let us try to help you? I mean, where, where do we go for here on health care? I don't have that answer right now, but I'm very much concerned. Uh, I'm concerned about the, the uh, historical impact. Uh, as uh, Dr. Fisher brought out today, uh, there is a statute that says that DOC will take care of this. Will they continue to take care of those buildings? Will they continue to provide security? Uh, if not, I need to get with Director Thompson at the History Center because it's going to be a budget request that's going to be coming in for the future. So what happens next? Uh, we've got enough information at a 30,000 foot view and now we start drilling down and what fiscal impact will this have on the state of Oklahoma. That's my job as appropriations chair, is to make sure that I know where the dollars come from and where they go, but also to make sure we serve the needs of the people of Oklahoma. And right now, northwestern Oklahoma seems to be hurting by this decision made by the Department of Corrections.